here we go. This one will be out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, United States. And our date is June the 12th, 1992, at 11.40 p.m. and 20 seconds. The sun is in Taurus with Venus. <clears throat> this is another one of those transit charts where you have Venus, a uh, fixed Earth sign, in her own house uh, with the sun. And um, I'd have to look back to say if the sun is behind, if Venus is behind the sun, or she's transiting across the sun. That's something you'll need to go back and check out. But once again, we're dealing with Earth signs and Earth planets. And this being fixed Earth, and Venus is her, in her own house, uh, so she's quite comfortable there. Uh, but because Venus is within 10 degrees of the sun, it is considered combust. Uh, if it's behind the sun, um, it's completely combust and has no effect at all. If it's transiting in front of the sun, and it makes its little crosses, uh, little dot across the sun, you can easily look this up. Uh, then it amplifies Venus. It empowers her, okay? So you really need to know which way this is going. And uh, just type in Venus Transit and you're going to see. And um, I don't actually recall. I remember the ones in uh, the past decade. But I don't recall the 92 one. Again, you would have to look that up. But it's quite obvious. They're embedded over the top of each other. Mercury, uh, planet of communication. Uh, mutable Earth planet is in the feminine side of the feminine side of Gemini. All right, so we have the Sun, Venus, and Mercury. Let's move along to Mars and see where your action is. <clears throat> Mars is in Pisces. Uh, Mars's house is actually Aries next door here. So uh, this is his last leg before he moves back into his own house. So you, you are wielding uh, a fire planet in a water sign. Okay? So I don't, um, <clears throat> from my point of view, it's going to kind of put the fire out, right? I don't uh, know if this is its debilitating sign or not. But you can uh, easily look that one up as well. Let's go to Saturn. No, Jupiter's next. <laughs> Jupiter in Leo. We, we've actually seen this quite a bit. And a lot of the charts where Jupiter is landing in Leo. Uh, Jupiter, allegedly the benevolent planet, with the power of Leo behind it. This house here belongs to the sun. And you also have Vesta here that uh, is going to land in Leo. And that's the Vestal Virgins. It's an asteroid, and uh, you can also look that one up. It has to do with purity. Okay, so you can add some purity to this, which might even make Jupiter benevolent at this point. Let's go to Saturn. It's still incredible how all these charts are turning out alike. Saturn in its own house of Cardinal Earth. Uh, you've already, you're coming up on your Saturn return in the 2020 um, conjunction with Saturn and Jupiter will be your Saturn return. And that's how you would look it up, Saturn return. Saturn in its own house of Cardinal Earth, the government restrictions, limitations, the, the taskmaster, the good teacher, 
the one that's going to, you're going to learn it one way or another. And uh, you can do it the hard way or the easy way, but Saturn in its own sign is going to make sure you get it done. And we can easily see Uranus over here in Sagittarius. Let's just pull that over. Uh, Neptune will be our next stop. Uranus, uh, the planet of transformation in the material world, industrial age, technology, our bodies, everything around us, outside of us. It's a planet of transformation and it's in your humanitarian sign, a fire sign of Sagittarius. Let's go find Neptune. things really laggy this morning uh, Neptune here with Uranus in fire sign so you got a double dip here um, Neptune uh, is rules water of course he carries the trident the god Neptune the god of the sea <clears throat> and uh, sitting here with Uranus in a fire sign um, water in fire so here's another cool down point for you that this could cool the heels of this uh, transformation for you put the fire out so to speak if that makes sense especially because uh, Neptune actually moves faster than Uranus if I got that right no Uranus moves faster than Neptune I might actually have to look that one up but anyway, it's not debilitated here. But if it's powerful enough, it's going it's going to curb this a little bit. It's going to help you out a little bit by putting the fire out of this transformation right here in the fire sign, which uh, all the signs go through this. Right now we're playing because all this is based on Saturn-Jupiter conjunctions that happen about every 20 years. And as Pluto, let's go ahead and bring Pluto into the mix so we can get a good look at everything. Okay, you're lucky that you do not have uh, the Pluto in Virgo. So again, you're not part of that generation but you're still going to feel the effects of the next conjunction and you are still an earth sign so you can't avoid it but you're not part of it um, in Libra which would be the claws of the eagle and right on the serpent so you come out good there uh, Libra is earth water air Libra is an air sign so once again air denotes spirit it's the unseen thing it's intangible and that is actually what Pluto deals with Pluto deals with the things you cannot touch see smell taste the subconscious mind uh, imagery symbology the soul spirit air so um, Pluto's going to get a bump here as far as transformation goes. Now, uh, a lot of the charts I'm doing have Pluto in Virgo, which has a lot to do with the 2020 conjunction coming up because it is in the uh, Earth sign, but yours is in an air sign. So this will be the marker for your change. When you start seeing Saturn-Jupiter conjunct in air signs, and it will start in mutable air when Pluto starts in mutable air that's the key jump and it starts an initiation a ritual that will move through the air signs and it takes a long time actually um, this has been going on here since the 60s into the 70s and will not culminate until 2020 yours starts here I mean you're born with it here so your change is going to be based on air signs and you can use Stellarium to look forward 
at where Pluto moves and where those conjunctions occur, especially if Pluto conjuncts with Saturn, Jupiter in an air sign. Those are going to be big transformation days for you in your life. I already see the moon right down here with um, Pluto. Now, you were born at 11.40 p.m. at night. So, basically, you're what I call a night baby. That um, Venus and the other planet, Mars, Mercury, uh, they're all on the other side of the planet from you. So, this is pretty much what you're looking at as far as the night you were born. You're going to have Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and the moon. Transformation in fire, transformation in air. Water is cooling down your outer transformation, but you have the moon here, which is your conscious mind, your personality, dealing with this Pluto transformation in air. Both of them there. Let's get a little better look at your moon. Not quite full. Um, one more day, and it would have been a full moon. You can calculate that slim. This is what I call slim shady. Um, the moon goes through 13 crescents waxing, 13 crescents waning. You have a full moon and a new moon. Uh, 13 and 13, I call it m, m and slim shady. If you care to know, that's where all that comes from. Uh, almost all of your music, all of your... Um, Movies, uh, television, is based on astrology. Um, even s many of the names of the actors you can find embedded in the ancient names of the constellations, the planets, even the asteroids. They're all there. Um, every language is going to trace back to the heavens as its origin. So let's go back um, once again. Because Let me finish this. Because your Pluto is up here in Libra with your moon, they're both in air signs. They're both, you're going to face whatever you have to face in this life, inwardly and outwardly. Uh, your subconscious is actually in a line with your consciousness in an air sign. <clears throat> now here's the kicker to all of this, because you're not an air sign. You're a fixed earth sign is your sun sign and uh, that's stubborn we've already been through this that's a that's a stubborn place to be especially with Venus you'll get a lot better understanding if you knew exactly where how the Sun was dealing with Venus here if Venus is debilitated then you have the opportunity to shine like the sun. But if Venus is transiting in front of the sun, it will embolden that fixed earth sign to where you will fight the change that comes for you in your life. And remember, yours is going to be based on the air signs, which again, spirit, the subconscious, uh, your shadow work, it, and you've got your moon, so you're in alignment there. That's a good thing. If Venus is behind the sun, that's going to be uh, better for you. You will not have as hard of a time. You will roll with the flow where this fixed earth is concerned. But if it, Venus is in front of the sun, it will empower her and you're going to fight the changes in your life. You're not going to like them. And a lot of times when we try to fight what's coming, uh, we don't usually win. I have not. When I've said, no, I'm not doing that, I found out, especially with Saturn over here in Capricorn, oh, yes, you are going to do it. You know, oh, you may not think you are, uh, but we're going to do this. Now, you can do it the easy way or the hard way, but we're going to do this. Now, you're pretty much spread out around the calendar. You're not locked into a bunch of air signs, water signs, fire signs. You're mostly air and earth. Earth and air. Uh, which I guess makes it easier. At least you don't have to deal with water and fire. Uh, 